Welcome to Edge Kids. Hello, welcome to Edge Kids. It is great to have you with us today. My name is Lisa and you have joined us for week five of our series called Storytime. Now we are looking at the New Testament in the Bible and we are zooming in on just some of the incredible, interesting and true stories. As many of you probably already know, the Old Testament, this part of the Bible, that's what happened before Jesus was born and the New Testament is after Jesus is born. So far with the life of Jesus, we've spoken about when He was born, when He was baptised, when He was performing miracles. Do you remember? Like raising His friend Lazarus from the dead, feeding 5,000 people. Jesus truly was the miracle man. Can you all say, miracle man? Miracle man, I like it. But today's story about Jesus, it's a bit of a different story. In Matthew chapter 21, Jesus begins by entering Jerusalem, riding a donkey, a donkey. He rode a donkey to fulfill the prophecy from Zechariah in the Old Testament, telling us about Jesus in the New Testament. Zechariah 9 verse 9 that says, Look, your king is coming to you. He's humble. He's riding on a donkey. Now in those days, a king, here we go, a king, they might have ridden into a town with a big royal parade or on a big horse, but not Jesus. He rode a humble donkey. Now we know today that Jesus is the king of kings, but did those people recognise him as a king then? A guy, random guy riding on a donkey, a king, really? Well, actually, Some people did see him that way. When they saw him riding in and when they were reminded of Zechariah's prophecy, some of them, they took their coats off, they got their coats, they took them off, they laid them out on the ground in front of Jesus. They waved branches from the trees and they said, Hosanna, praise God. But not everyone thought that. Others weren't so sure who this Jesus guy was and what he was all about. So fast forward a little and that brings us to today's story. What happens next? What happens after Jesus arrives in Jerusalem? Are you ready for today's story? All right, I wanna hear you say story time. You ready? We can get this one going, ready? Story time, louder. Story time, story time, story time, story time. Let's go for it. This is the story of Jesus cleansing the temple found in the Bible in John chapter two. One day when Jesus traveled to Jerusalem for the Passover, he entered the temple with his disciples. The temple was full of people buying and selling things as though it was a market. People were selling sheep, cattle and doves, and people were exchanging money with one another. When Jesus saw this, he was not happy because this was not what the holy temple was meant to be for. In fact, Jesus made a whip and he chased away the sheep, cattle and doves, and he flipped the tables of those exchanging money. Jesus said, Get these things out of here. Stop turning my father's house into a marketplace. The religious leaders were not happy with Jesus as he explained to them that the temple was meant to be a holy place of prayer. Once this had happened, blind people and people who couldn't walk came to Jesus at the temple and he healed them. Then suddenly, children started recognising who Jesus was too and they started shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Again, this upset the religious leaders, but Jesus loved the children's praise and He encouraged it because He knew how powerful it was. And that is the story of Jesus cleansing the temple. (laughs) This is one of my favourite stories in the whole Bible. There is something so incredible that happens when distractions and unholy things are removed and people are able to freely run to Jesus and worship Him. Kids, I want to encourage you, worship is powerful. Jesus himself quoted Psalm 8 verse 2, which tells us that when children worship, it silences the enemy. The enemy's mouth is shut. When children start worshipping, worship is powerful. Now it's my prayer today that this story can also make us look at our own lives. We are a temple of God. Maybe there's some things in our lives, some distractions, some not so good things, some unholy things that we need to get rid of in our lives so we can freely fix our eyes on God and worship Him. I wanna pray for us right now because there is something powerful that happens when we pray and when we worship Jesus. Let's close our eyes. 
God, we love you so much. We worship you, God. Together we stand united saying we worship you, God. You are mighty. You are holy. You are the King of kings. God, we love you so much. And God, we give our lives to you. God, help us see things that aren't of you. Help us fix our eyes on you, Jesus. And may we always live lives of worship to you because that is so powerful. We love you so much, Jesus. In your name, Amen. Love you guys so much. Keep reading your Bibles. Keep finding more and more of these incredible stories because they are powerful. These stories can truly change your lives. Have a great week, guys. See you next week. Bye.